Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-48. Our last episode, the crew battled the night hag of Pellet's Swamp and barely survived. A quick thinking move by Phidias was able to defeat the evil presence and broke her spell over Harris and Grish. We resume with healing given out to Brother Stance, Yolanda Two Blades, and Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus. The large knight spit out a great deal of bog water, which dribbled down his face. After a coughing fit, he gasped out his thanks to the large Zenobian, who shook his head. Thank Phidias, Sir Knight. He saved us all. Again. The nearby Yolanda questioned the comment and was bewildered about what happened after she fell into the water. Brother Stance crawled over to his wounded comrades and also inquired as to the events that had transpired. Harris the mage approached with the last of the healing potions and offered an explanation. The bog witch must have been quite powerful as the globes of entrapment are rare indeed. Her having a pair means that she was extremely dangerous and a fierce adversary. After Grisha and I were captured, we were able to watch helplessly as the events unfolded. Harris and Grish took turns explaining the events that had transpired during the battle, and it quickly became apparent to the trio that they were indeed lucky to be alive. So, you mean that damn snake actually came in useful? Blasted the knight. Stance and Grish shook their heads, and Omel exhaled deeply. Well, I guess I owe the gnome an apology, then. He looked around to Phidias, but did not see him. He began to call out for the rogue, and the others added their voices, concerned for his well-being. After a few moments, a hollow-sounding voice screamed out a response. Hang on! I'll be up in a minute! The group followed the voice and discovered an old, moss-covered altar atop some high ground. Runes covered into the old stone could not be deciphered by Harris, who attempted to translate them. The others looked around, but still cannot locate the smallest member of the group. After several minutes of puzzled searching, the group circled around the stone box and waited. Moments later, a panel on the base of the altar grinded open, causing all to jump back. A cobwebbed covered gnome crawled out from the stone box, armed with a strange sack and several scroll cases. Wiping the fibers from his face, his broad smile put everyone at ease. That old witch lives underneath this altar. If you thought the swamp smells bad, you need to go down into her hovel. He abruptly deposited his looting atop the table and spread it out for all to see. The ensemble looked over the items and took turns pawing through the belongings. Sir Omel advised he would stand watch as he was none too keen on going through the witch's personal possessions. He brought up the specter of the loot being cursed but Grish dismissed the opinion, although Yolanda did pause on that concern. How much of this stuff was in the bag? queried Brother Stance to the gnome. Phidias explained that it was very strange as the bag was empty and hanging on a peg covered by a ratty old shawl. Puzzled, the group considered the information before completely inventorying the items. A splashing was heard and the party members noticed the large knight slashing at the water. Do you have something? asked Harris. Sir Omel explained that he thought he saw the aqua snake and wanted to make sure it doesn't return. Yolanda explained that the creature could only poison once per day, so they were probably safe. Phidias interjected that there may be more of the snakes, which did, l did little to assuage anyone's fear. After a better inspection, the group returned to the inventory to determine what, if anything, was of value. Do we have to do this in the swamp? asked Yolanda as she swatted another insect from her skin. It's going to be dark soon, and I can think of better places to be. 
The group considered the proposal and it was agreed that they would get to the ruins on the edge of the bog and set up camp. Gathering the trove of documents, they stuffed everything into the strange bag and headed out as the sun began to fall. Finding their unmolested contas at the ruins, the group set up a small campsite and ate a cold meal of stale rations. A small fire was lit and the papers were split between Grish, Yolanda, and Harris, who was utilizing his Comprehend Languages spell to read the materials. Omel, Stance, and Phidias took turns looking at the other items that the gnome had procured from the lair. Most of the baubles were unusual, but didn't seem to be of any value, although Sir Omel took an interest in a small piece of jewelry that he couldn't put down. As he studied it, the rogue also noticed the item and began to pester the large knight about wanting to see it. That is weird. And stupid. You can have it back, said Phidias after looking at it. The knight of Bacchus took the wooden item back. Stance looked over his shoulder and asked what it was. Omel held the small item aloft and said it was a person with the middle missing. After deciding he liked it, he grabbed some string and fastened it into a necklace which he hung around his neck. I like this. I'm going to put it on a better chain when we get back to Saydown. A loud gasp from Grish caught everyone's attention as he read one of the documents. The group gathered around him and began to hammer him with questions. He shuffled through some more of his papers and held them against the campfire. There, he exclaimed. Do you see it? It's right there. The others leaned in, peering closer. Words began to form between the written lines uncovering a secret message. Yolanda and Harris shook their heads as they read the message and began to hold their papers up to the fire. Mine is dated six months ago. Here's one that's dated a year ago. This one is dated four months ago, each responded. As they began to shuffle the documents in place, Omel announced that he was hungry again and he was going to go hunt something up from the brush. After several minutes of furious paper shuffling, the three, capable of reading the Denali language, began to uncover a twisted story. Stance and Phidias took turns examining the weird bag, attempting to decipher what kind of hide it could be, but had no solid answers. Ten minutes went by, and Omel returned with a small boar that he threw on the fire. At one point, the fibers holding his new necklace caught on fire, nearly dropping the bauble into the flames. He placed his necklace on the stump next to him and bragged about how good the boar would taste. After a few more minutes of studying the texts, the trio announced their findings. The papers showed that Pellet had been deceiving people and wasn't human after all. Omel, Stance, and Phidias stopped eating their boar and asked what he was. A concerned Grish furrowed his brows and glumly announced, Pellet is an Arcanaloth. Surprise covered everyone's face, and the stump Sir Omel was sitting atop of cracked in half, landing him on the wet ground where he sat slack-jawed. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.